Hello from Farland. This is just a happy little tip. A lot of you may be very familiar with all this, and uh, this is old hat to you, but I just thought for maybe some of you younger guys that are, are new at it, I would uh, offer this up as kind of a, a way to make life a little bit easier when you're painting scenery. I just thought I'd offer this up as a little tip. I buy paint. I usually buy just commercial interior house paint. I can get any color I want and a quart costs about eleven dollars. A gallon costs twenty-two or so but uh, I mean you rarely need a gallon. I did have a gallon which I actually used up. That's not really my point. It's inexpensive paint to buy it this way and you can get whatever colors you want but the trick of it is to thin it down. I always thin it before I use it because it goes on so much easier. It's quite thick. Um, they make it quite thick so that it doesn't run. It's easy for the homeowner to apply to the walls but uh, it's too thick really to paint on plaster. So, in, uh, while I was painting this, uh, which is part of my new hill, while I was painting this, I was thinking about, well, you know, I don't know, maybe some people don't know that. It's an old stage trick for painting scenery uh, to water down, the, water down the paint. It goes on much easier. This is pretty well all painted now, but it goes on so much easier and you don't have to thin it by that much, maybe by 10%, 10% add 10% water to it. In other words, if you've got a, a cup of paint, which you'll probably never use, but say a quarter cup of paint, then put in a teaspoon of water or so, or maybe a tablespoon, depending. I mean, you can play around with it, but it, uh, it just makes it ever so much easier to to paint scenery, uh, particularly plaster, which is full of little pinholes and so on, makes it makes it a very difficult surface to paint. The other tip that I might offer is if you wet your brush first, it's much easier to clean up later. And I do that even with my Even my small brushes, I wet them first before I start painting anything because it, it makes cleanup so much easier. Right there, I, I always keep a couple of brushes in water just so that they're handy because there's so many little things to paint here and there and everywhere around the layout and all of a sudden I get an idea, oh, I need to paint that. So uh, instead of making a big deal out of it, I just go grab a brush out of that uh, wipe the water out of it with a paper towel and then uh, then paint whatever it is I want to paint. I wanted to mention that uh, one of the things that I've found very useful is the uh, paint program in Microsoft. What I like to do with it is to take a photograph and then use paint to try to figure out what my background is going to look like and the beauty of it is I can erase it and try it again as many times as I want trying various different shapes and ideas one of the things that this has made me realize is I need to fill in that one corner of the board there I'm, I'm gonna to have to come up with some way to fill that in because it's a gaping gap if I ever want to take a video or a photograph that needs to go right there the shapes that I'm thinking of would be a hill I'll see if I can get that get that right a hill that started a little bit behind the uh, tunnel entrance and came up around and just some shadows uh, behind the hill that's there, the, the real hill, uh, showing that there are, you know, mountains on behind it. Here's another picture of another area at which I painted in. Boy, it's really hard to get these up there right there. That's not bad. 
painted in with paint, uh, trying to see what it would look like back there. I might even be able to paint some little houses. I, I'm going to try it this time. Never tried to do that before, but I'm going to try to paint some little houses, I think, back in there. I can take these boards off. Everything is removable. Even the mountain is removable. And I can take these boards off and lay them out flat. Well, first I would uh, outline where the mountain is actually is. Um, then I would uh, paint the background in, uh, you know, based roughly on what I've done in paint. And then, uh, you know, not here, not where it sits, but, you know, laying down on a table or something, paint in whatever I want. I just thought the paint was really useful, the program paint was really useful, and I thought I'd mention it. And that's the method I used to create this mural here of uh, water receding from the viewer and mountains, uh, highlands lining it on both sides. It's no particular place, just Farland. Here's another tip. When you're making paving, at least asphalt paving, um, if you use chalkboard paint, it's really, really cheap. You can get that at the hobby store. And then you just get some little, you let, you let some uh, drywall mud chunks dry out. It's a very fine uh, material and it crumbles really easy. And you rub it on the chalkboard paint after it's dry and it, it crumbles and it gets chalky and uh, when you're done you can rub it down with a wet cloth if you get too much on there but when you get done I think it looks convincingly like asphalt surfaces when they get older not young and black asphalt but after it's grayed out a ways this is a way that I've perfected to simulate asphalt surfaces and it's very very inexpensive